Welcome back everyone, my name is Ms. Wyatt and I work for the Boys and Girls Club of LA Harbor and today we're going to be covering the movement Fauvism. So Fauvism was a very short-lived movement that happened between the years of 1905 and only 1909-1910. Its characteristics include very um, unrepresentational colors and uh, different, different ways of portraying real life. Very, very bright, very vivid and we're going to show you today a way that they painted some of their portraits when Fauvism started. So I'm going to give you guys some info and then we're going to get started with our activity. The name Fauvism wild, or Wild Beasts was given by an art critic who stated that these new paintings look wild and colorful and crazy against Donatello's classic sculpture of Adonis. Our project today is inspired by some of the colorful portraits created by Fauvist artists much, uh, such as Matisse and Durain. So let's get started. Today for our supplies, we're only going to be needing very few supplies. So we're going to need a page protector, something like this. If you, guys, if you guys have acetate or a transparency sheet, that works as well. Um, scissors, a sharpie or any permanent marker, but it has to be permanent. White glue or glue stick and tissue paper. Oh, tissue paper and paper. The paper is optional and I'll show you why. So today we're going to be making this. So to do this, all we're going to do is find, and this is part of your supply as well. We're going to find an image that you like and be of yourself or anything you find in the magazine. And we're going to trace this image. We're going to trace it on to our transparency. You, there's different methods. I'm going to show you today's method, which we did with tissue paper, as you can see here, which is going to be glued on, or you can do it with watercolor and even with sharpies. But today I'm going to show you this method because I feel like it's the most colorful and probably the funnest to do. So let's get started. Once you source your image, you can actually make multiple with one sheet. I would cut this straight. I would cut this either in half or just start off by removing the edges to release the sheets. All right, so frame it as you would like. It's kind of hard to see, but just frame the clear plastic on top of your photo as you like and just start tracing. We want to just trace the important features uh, just like the basic shape of the features you don't have to get completely detailed I'm just kind of going around the main contours of the face and if you mess up you can just get some rubbing alcohol and clean it off so that's what the q -tip. so I'm going to just quickly add the details some of the details of the eyebrows and then just get the basic the basic shape you don't have to color anything in, the coloring will be done with the tissue paper. So as you're, as you're um, tracing, start thinking about the colors that you would like. So if you take some time to look at the Fauvism, they did a lot of like, a lot of bright colors. Some of the colors that they use included green, yellow, fuchsia, purple, blue, and they stuck with just those colors and orange as well. Um, I think be strategic about the way you place your colors or being strategic is very important because you want to make sure that your colors aren't clashing. So take the time to look into the color theory and maybe just use complementary colors for the face and all the other colors for the background. As you can see in this one, I did just use yellow as the base and I used other colors as highlights and then kept one solid color for the other accessories. It just makes it better and it doesn't detract too much from the face. So just keep that in mind and figure out what skin tone you want to start off with and then work from there. So this is what you should have so far once you're done tracing a very very simplified tracing or drawing of a portrait because all the color will be done afterwards or added afterwards you can detail it after as well so you're gonna flip this the other way and you're gonna glue all the tissue paper on the back um, but just keep in mind that anytime you place the paper you cannot Put another paper on top it's not going to show through so you always have to lay down your base colors first or your lightest colors first and then the other ones in the back i decided that i want to make the skin green 
So I'm going to go ahead and do any like contour or her lips or her eyes a different color and I'm going to just keep her skin green and keep the whites of her eyes, her eyes white. So I'm going to start with that. So choose all your colors, sort them out. I took my time to kind of sort them all out. Now I'm going to just get started. I'm going to go here with my white and just put the white where the whites of the eyes should be. And I'm not even cutting it super precisely, I'm just kind of putting it where it would go. I'm spreading this out, placing it there, and tear it. There. That's what's cool about Bob's portraits is it that they weren't they weren't so precise with where the colors were placed, but the color, the placement of the colors themselves were were, were well thought out. Um, they made sure that they were placing colors next to each other that were complementary, colors that wouldn't um, fight each other very much. So. The parts is good. To figure out where to place the contours, just look at the picture and think of your own structure on your face. I know the jaw would probably be a little, you know, more defined. So I just place that as a contour because I know that would be defined. So you can place any contours where you feel like they are needed because lighting isn't, um, we're not using the rule of lighting right now. We're just using the rule of color. So you can place the contour here, you can place it on the nose um, or darken the neck. Anywhere you want to, I just wanted to use it as an excuse to add more color without having to um, use too much. So I just wanted to use the green as a contour and I'm gonna just keep going on with this like limey green type of yellow throughout the whole skin. But if you just wanna add more patches of colors, like I said, for contour or shadowing, you can. There's a little bit of shadow here and that's the perfect place to put it or under the eye right here would be a good place to put it as well. But I just went ahead with just like, just, just here in the cheekbones. So you can also do the jaw, but that's what I did. I'm gonna, keep, I'm gonna continue going with this with my yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and use a different color. Probably, I want to contrast this face a lot, so I might do fuchsia either for the background. I think I'm gonna do fuchsia for the background to make the face stand out. Once again, keeping um, color theory in mind. So yellow and purple or violet are each other's complementary colors. And I'm not gonna stick with one shade of fuchsia. I can just do multiple shades of purple. I have more like a plant purple that I'm gonna add on here. Just to, once again, bring a little bit more depth to the piece. So I just I keep that in mind that when you're layering, I'm going to do a quick watch here in a sec. And then overlap this one right off top. And it's going to change the effect just a little bit of how it looks. And don't worry about all the white. The glue's going to dry clear. So, But if that's an issue and it really bothers you, um, you can't really see past it, just go ahead and just use the glue stick. Just actually use the glue stick for the first one. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep the face pretty warm with yellows and pinks, and I'm gonna do the background kind of cool with or the rest is kind of cool. So purple, purple is a weird color because purple fits within the warm and the cool when we look at color temperatures because it's a mixture of both the warm and the cool color. But I think it's gonna work out regardless, even if it's not, it's uh, the opposite temperature as the yellow, it should work. Very with Just a lot of layering. The more layering, the more intense the color is. Okay. Check again, 
That's looking pretty cool. And then once again, I'm gonna go more blues and greens down here because I have a lot of warm over here. So I'm gonna go cool now. Well, I like this cobalt. And this is her neck. So once again for contouring, I can use a different shade of this green or darken it by adding a different green back. So I might just go with the same color and add a darkening in the back to maybe darken it a little bit. We add the green behind it. So I'll keep going just with her shirt and that's it. Effect is going to be different based on how you cut your squares. So this one were really tiny little squares, these are a little longer. But still really successful, like I said, just being a little methodical about how you place the colors makes a huge difference. Like with this one, I had different shades of yellow, so there's more tones on her face. But this one looks cool too because I like how flat it is. So if you look at some of these and some of the ones that they did in Fallism, the colors are really flat. This one alone is extremely flat, this mm -hmm. wash, and it's still very successful. So. It works either way. Either way you do it, it works. This one has a split co coloration, which is really popular in Fallism. It's called like party color or like a Harley Quinn pattern. So this is very common to see uh, be using the split complementary one half of the face and one of the other. So, but this one I just wanted to have a very flat application. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. I'm gonna just, I guess, I'll cut off the X's later. I'm gonna just do square two. It seems like a lot, but we might need a lot. And just adhere it to your base color. All I'm gonna do from here is we're gonna just cut up all the excess. Oh, it's too dark. I chose yellow because I just wanted the skin tone to pop a little more. But I feel like it wasn't as intense as I wanted it to be, so I just chose that color. Um, and with the last one I made, I chose orange for the same reason that I wanted the skin to pop a little bit more. So whatever part you want to accentuate more, pick the color, pick that color for your background color. And it's gonna help move that color forward in this face. There she is. So when, so it's just, I suggest looking into um, some of the portraits uh, that like Matisse did. He was probably the first one that did it all of them and Bloom Mink and Durain, they're really good at um, placing their colors in the right way. Um, even if the, the tone was green, they knew where to highlight it with pink. They knew where to highlight it with blue. It was really good. So um, I suggest you look into the movement and try this activity out. And if you have any other questions or want more information about the movement, feel free to email me. And um, yeah, hope you like it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.